Mark, I'm the producer for Rusty Hearts, Perfect World Entertainment. I'm going to show you Rusty Hearts right now. Rusty Hearts is, at its core, it's a dungeon crawling hack and slash MORPG. That means you can get in with a uh, party of friends, party of up to four people, crawl through the dungeons, collect a bunch of loot, fight against some epic bosses, uh, level up your characters, learn skills, all this great stuff with a heavy, heavy emphasis on action. So there's no grind, you're never mindlessly grinding through the game, you're always uh, on a quest whether it's uh, collection, story, anything like that. You're always doing something, leveling up your character. Uh, it's a great game, all about the action, and we'll jump right in and I'll show you some. All right, great. First thing I want to say is that even though Rusty Hearts is a PC game, it has been optimized for use with any PC gamepad. So uh, we have an Xbox 360 controller here. If you have a Logitech controller, um, any controller you have, plug right in and you can use it. Um, the default controls are with the keyboard. It's even, and with that, it's not your standard uh, uh, keyboard and mouse WASD setup. Definitely built for speed, built for action. So you actually control your character with the arrow keys, and all your attacks and your skills are done with the left hand because you have greater access uh, to more keys with your left hand. So it's definitely built for that. If you're not comfortable with that, all the keys are fully mappable. There's two sets, so you can switch back and forth between two sets. You can set it up however you like. That's one of the, cust uh, the things about customization in the game, which is actually my favorite element of the game, is the customization. So there's the keyboard gameplay customization and the characters too. Uh, this isn't your traditional MMORPG where you build a character and you, uh, you, know, you kind of grow them from the ground up. Uh, you choose one of that launch web three characters and they all have their own backstory, their own kind of lore they follow, their own way they go through the game, uh, their own skill sets. There's also not classes, but each of the characters brings something different to the table. For example, the girl right here, Angela, she's like an apprentice witch in the game. Uh, she, she's more of like a tank character. She's a little slower. She has a huge weapon that deals a ton of damage. She also has heal spells, and she's the only one that has um, any sort of ranged attacks. Another character named Tude, uh, he's uh, built for speed, right? Close quarters TQC combat. He has this big claw that he uses where he gets all his power from. Um, so he doesn't do as much damage for her, but he does it much faster. Third character is sort of a, a combination between the two of them. So players are really open to, uh, uh, to, to try different play styles too, and they can choose any character they want. They're not tied to it, they can jump in and out between characters and different storylines, so uh, they can do it however they want. Um, so one more thing about customization, we have An the character Angela right here. Um, I want to show you a few different uh, like visual customization options. We open up the inventory and the loadout screen. So you have all your equipment. All your equipment here is what um, uh, goes to the attributes of your character, right? So um, you know some are better against like physical damage, holy damage, water, anything like that. Pretty basic uh, gear stuff, and you know, there's gear head to toe. But the costumes, costumes are different. They're, they would change the visual look of your character. And they get pretty funky. We have a cool costume right here, but we have the insect set. So you just equip that, it turns Angela into this roach. So it's pretty sweet. Each character, uh, each of the three characters has their own insect. There's also uh, what I call like the seafood set. I don't know if it's the official name for it, but that's what I call it. Uh, where there's a shark, there's an octopus, and some other stuff. These are full body sets. They're also, uh, items it like individual items so a hat hair color shirt socks even your underwear you can uh, customize all of that as you're going progressing through the game you're constantly collecting new uh, uh, new gear new items new costumes so you're never gonna be bored on what you're gonna you know what you're gonna see on your on your character um, so let's get right into some action which is the core of the game right this is the hub world which we're in right here this is where you're gonna go I'm gonna change her out to the other one real quick so you can get a better view <laughs> Uh, the hub world is where you get you get your quest, you complete your quest, talk to your NPCs, forge your items, progress the story, everything like that. But we want to go to a dungeon, which is where the action takes place. So you go into which, whichever world you're in, you go into the dungeon, um, according to your quest or whatever you want to do. You select your individual one, difficulty will go hard, and then you jump right in. I'm going to need two hands for this though. Okay. All right. Good. Now I'm going to use the controller, it's a little more comfortable for me. Some people, especially the hardcore players, are going to love the keyboard. We're at. Totally up to you, it doesn't offer any competitive advantage either way. And we'll jump right in. So as soon as you start moving, you start getting attacked by these monsters, these are the skeleton soldiers. 
each world has their own like unique set uh, of monsters and of enemies. And as you can see, it's all about skills and it's all about combos. So, there we go. Perfect. So it's about it's about grouping your skills, your in your shots together. If you look down here, you will see all your skills, which is A through H on the keyboard and the uh, shoulder buttons on the controller. And each character has two different sets of them, um, so you can equip up to six skills. Um, you can learn a lot, like, you know, multiple skills, but you can equip up to 12 at a time. Loot, right? All the characters drop some loot, which is one of my other favorite things about it. You're always getting, uh, you're collecting gold, collecting new gear, items, uh, the recipes for things. There's an NPC that cooks you different types of food that give you, you know, HP, MP buffs, all that type of stuff. Could you talk a little bit about the crafting system? Definitely. So. Uh, there's certain NPCs that you go to in the game that help you uh, craft items, and they're quest-based, so they will uh, they'll tell you what you need to get, and they'll tell you where to get it. Uh, so, for example, if you need um, you need to collect ten fish scales, so there's like a fish enemy. So you go and collect ten of those, bring it back to that NPC, and he or she will craft the item for you. Um, you, you know, mostly it, normally it's like relevant to uh, to the area. So, so like you know, a fish scale item would be uh, would be good against the the water-based enemies. Um, there's also a uh, there's also another NPC you can go to that'll forge your weapons specifically. So he'll he'll give your weapon buffs. He'll make it stronger. Uh, there are different weapons in the game, and once your character gets to a certain point, you can kind of decide whether you want to stick with your weapon. For example, her main one is a sword, which she has this pretty sick scythe right here, which gets even better as you level up. So you can decide whether you want to stay with the uh, with your normal sword to keep leveling that up or progress onto the sky, totally up to you. Now, now tell us about the elements of this uh, game that will appeal to casual versus uh, hardcore gamers. Right, good question. So this game is very well balanced between the casual and the hardcore. First of all, just having the controller alone uh, speaks to the, the casual. Uh, it's probably going to be good for the casual audience. Um, it's, it's also super easy to uh, just hop into a party with your friends, so it, it's meant to be a, a very social uh, very social experience, right? So we, uh, we streamline the process of partying up, finding your friends, getting in the guild, so people can easily jump into the game, jump into a dungeon, and start fighting right away. With different difficulty modes, everything from nor there's normal, hard, very hard, you unlock the harder ones by beating the, the previous ones. And there's one like extremely hard mode called Blood Mode, which has some other uh, prerequisites that you need to meet before you access that. But just to hop in if you just want to get in and play with some friends, um, very easy to do. Not a huge client download. Uh, you don't need. You don't definitely don't need like the most up to date computer in the world. Um, uh, so it's very easily accessible to anyone who wants to play. Hardcore gamers, they're gonna love the skills. They're gonna love uh, you know learning. Teaching the character all the different skills, getting the uh, the rare costumes, the rare items, um, and being able to uh, use. Uh, I, I imagine they're going to want to use the keyboard as you know efficiently as possible. Um, being able to learn to do that is really going to uh, deal with the hardcore audience. And could you speak a moment on uh, when you expect uh, the, the release uh, to happen? Maybe in what quarter? Right, the closed beta is uh, right now scheduled for July 2011. Based on how that goes, we're going to uh, decide on an open beta release after that. So we don't have a um, we don't have a date for the open beta, but closed beta will begin. is scheduled to begin in July. Um, anyone can go to rustyhearts.perfectworld.com uh, and sign up for an account. They'll get an alert when the closed beta is live, and if they have a beta key, they can jump right in. Great. And is there anything else that you would like to, to show us, or any unique uh, um, characteristic of the game? Definitely. I'm about to get to it right now, and it's the boss. Each dungeon has their own boss, uh, unique to that area. So we're gonna go into it really quick. Let me beat these guys. And this dungeon that we were in right now is pretty straightforward, just start to finish. As you progress through the game, there's going to be a lot more, uh, a lot more maze elements, a lot more puzzle elements to the dungeons. Um, you know, certain routes you can take, you can get lost. Uh, sometimes there, you can only go through gates a certain number of times. 
all that type of stuff. So it gets much more challenging. This is the boss of this dungeon right here, big guy. Pretty strong. I think we can take care of him. They all have their minions that you can fight. And of course the bosses, get it once you beat them, tons of EXP. I beat it pretty easily because it's pretty huge character. Um, but so if you can see up here, there's these loot cards. And these are one of the best things that you can pick up throughout the game because there's a little mini game at the end of each dungeon that we're about to see. We get graded. Your grade is based on your style points, which is uh, how effectively you use your skills and uh, how many combinations you racked up and your hit count. So low hit count and high number of style points equals a good grade. So those loot cards that you find in the dungeon are right here. All of these give you something, a small amount of gold or something like that, but these loot cards give you some good gear. Bronze is good, silver is better, gold is best. Somewhere in here there's four bronze ones. You can pick. I didn't get a bronze. If I want to, I can try and select it again, spend 500 gold, try again, and I didn't get a bronze one. But it shows you where it all is. The great thing about that is that if you're in a party of, say, you know, two, three, or four people, everybody sees the same deck. So everybody's trying to get the good one, and you can see what your friend flipped over, and if you got the good one, he gets it, and you don't. You know? So it's pretty cool. Um, at the end of each dungeon, you go around, collect all the loot. You can hit the dungeon store, anything that you maybe picked up that you want to sell off, you can just drag it right into the store, get some gold for it. Uh, you can repair all your gear, all that type of normal stuff. You can go, if you have quests to complete, you can go back to the town. You can explore the dungeon again if you have some unfinished business. And um, that's pretty much the, the main focus of uh, Rusty Arts. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. And uh, looking forward to uh, seeing this release and being a part of the beta. Very nice. I can't wait. Thank you so much.